Hey there! In the last video, we put together this command line based PDF file merger script, and we were working with these two PDF documents here. This time, we're going to add a graphical user interface, or GUI, using the tkinter library. So let's get started and make a new Python script here, and we're just going to call this one GUI framework.py. We're not going to add a lot of functionality to this, but we want to see what the layout of our form or interface is going to look like. First thing to do is import tk enter, and we're just going to take everything from there and create a variable called root, set that equal to this tk function. And this is going to give us our main window. Um, so when we open up, when we run this, we're going to have a window pop open, and uh, root is going to be what we can add all of our different elements to. We can set the title of that, and I'll just call this something like something PDF merger something like that. And this title is going to be, you know, what you see at the top of a window when you have it open. Before we go too crazy now, adding a bunch of different um, elements to this, it helps to sketch these things out. So I went ahead and sketched out what our former interface is going to look like. We're going to have a title up here, and then we're going to have a couple buttons where we can add PDFs. We'll be able to see what their file names are, how many pages are in them, and then give the user the option to select from those pages. Once they have that, big save as button down here, and we should be all set. Because we're gonna be using the grid option for placing these elements uh, as we add them, it helps to add a grid as well. So then I just went ahead and added these, and you can see that we can make up this interface with a series of rows and then columns within those rows. So let's start off with that first row go back to Adam and that first row is just going to have one label in there so we just say label we add it to the root object like that and we set the text so let's say this is PDF manipulator just to be a little bit different um, than our title so we can see the difference there so that's, that's all we need for the label and then we call grid and we can set the row which will be zero because these are both zero index the column which we'll say two um, and then sticky kind of shows what side of the uh, column or which part of the column uh, border it goes to so we'll say east or the right side and you can do north south east west um, like that now we'll go to the next row we're going to add a button to root we'll say the text is add PDF and because it's a button when we click on it we need to give it a command and then this will be the function that we call when we uh, click on this button so let's just say load one for now it doesn't exist yet but we'll add it later and like before we'll add this to the grid this time we're in row one but now we're on column zero like that okay the next thing I guess I can scoot this over now let me try to make this smaller so we can see what we're doing as we go. I don't know if that'll be too visible in the video, but we'll go with that. Uh, the next thing we want to add that file name. So we're going to add a label for that and add it to root. This time we're going to use text variable. And what this allows us to do is change that once we open up the uh, interface. So we've got, uh, let's just call this file name one, which will be a variable that we create later on. Oops. And we're going to say the width is equal to 20. Um, you don't need to do that, but if you don't set the width right now, it'll, because there's going to be nothing in there when we start, it'll start off like with a very small column. And then as soon as you add a file, it's going to jump out so that it makes the form kind of jump. And I don't like that. Um, so we'll do this on the grid. We're in row one, now we're in column one. And this time for sticky, um, because we want to keep it, I guess, like stretched out on that, that entire column, we can put this tuple in, which will be north, south, east, west. I don't think the order really matters there. Okay, uh, now we can go to the next label, which we'll put on root. And this one will be simple, text, and we'll just say pages here grid row equals one oops 
on equals one. And for the actual count on the pages, we're going to want to do basically the same thing, except we'll add that text variable, which I'll try to spell correctly. I can never seem to spell variable in these videos. And we'll just say pages one will be the name of that variable there. And let's make the width here to be three. Put that on the grid, row one, column three. And like before, we'll add that sticky here where we'll do north, south, east, west, just like that. Okay, now we get a little bit different because we're going to add these entry boxes over here. We still have labels and then we'll have an entry box after. So let's add that label, root, text, start, and let's say grid, one, column, is four, like that. And because we're going to want to access what the user types in here, we're going to set these entries, we're going to assign them to a variable. So we'll just say S1 for start one. And this is going to equal entry, which we place on the root. Um, and then text variable is going to equal start one. And we're going to bring the width down to three this time. And because we've assigned it to a variable, we can't call grid right there. So we'll do that here. Now we can just use the variable name S1. Okay. And we're going to basically do the same thing for end. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Now we'll be in column six. And this will change to E1. Whoops like that. And we'll change the variable name here to end one. And this column is going to have to go to seven. Okay. Uh, we're going to skip the second row here because it's basically going to be a copy and paste for us. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything's working the way it should. So let's jump down to this final row, which will just be a button. Root. Let's say the text is save PDF as. We'll give it a command of save PDF. And let's make the width here to be 10. Put that on the grid. Now we're down to row three, column two. And we'll say sticky east, like up here. The way this is put together, this ends up kind of centering it onto the uh, onto the form. Finally, um, before we finish this up, um, we can add some padding, and rather than add it to everything, um, found this on Stack Overflow. I'm gonna steal it. And this is just going to loop through all of the children on that, um, all of these children on that root object, um, because we're calling that with for all the children in there. Um, we can add this attribute with a pad x equals 10 and a pad y equals 10, just like that. Padding just, we don't need to do that, but it makes things look a little bit nicer. And then call this root main loop. And that's going to open up our interface. So uh, we could try to run this. It's not going to work because we need to add a couple of things. Um, in these entries and some of our dynamic labels, we ended up with uh, variables that are going to be a little bit different than the variables that we usually work with. So for TK enter, it, when you set a variable um, that you want to be able to use on your interface, you actually use a different type. So we're going to call these here after our root. Um, file name one, we're going to set equal to a string var, just like a function here. Um, pages one, also a string var. And there's different types here, but I just like to use string for everything uh, to keep things simple. 
and I don't you do this too often either. So, um, like that, and then an end one, which is also going to equal a string var, like that. And this will allow us to get and set these uh, variables and update our uh, form as we go. Finally, uh, we have these commands, these functions that we called here that we didn't add. So let's go ahead and add those. We'll start with the save PDF, which we're not going to add yet. So I'm just going to be lazy and say pass. Um, but then for the load one, we are going to use this and we'll just say f1 is equal to ask open file name and this is a new function here which is going to require us to import something else also within tkinter but we're going to go to this file dialog and this allows us to get like a nice user window of like when you open up a normal file. Um, so it looks pretty familiar. So ask open file name will return that file name. And we have a couple options in here. So we're going to say file types is going to equal a whoops, PDF file, comma. And then what we actually want to see are anything that ends in PDF like that and then we can just do a regular all files and then these are what, what's going to be the option um, that you see when you're in that file dialog window so we'll see that in a little bit once we open that we can take that file name one and we can set it to. So we're not just going to say equals, we're going to say set, and we're going to use the file name that we get, um, but then do this little trick here, and take the last bit. So we're going to end up with this giant file name that's going to go all the way back from our root directory. Um, all this is going to do is split it up by each of those files, and then take the last piece of that split up list, um, just to make it look a little bit nicer. PDF, we're going to use our PDF um, function that we used in the, uh, made in the last video. Call that on F1. So pages one, we can set with PDF get num pages. So that's pretty familiar. Start one. We know that's going to start on one. And end one, we can set to We could just call that or we could, you know, just do that again like that. So as long as I didn't make any typos, we should be able to run this and see a script pop up. Or our window, sorry. <laughs> so let's try to run this GUI framework. Okay, so that's a good sign. So we can see we have our basic layout here. That's looking, you know, basically what we wanted. We can add that other row later on. Now let's add a PDF. Okay, I get this um, file dialog window. And here are those options that we added, our PDF file or all files. So we could actually put whatever we wanted here um, in those tuples and we'd see that. So let's try to open up this first document. Remember this one had two pages. So, looks like I made a typo here. Uh, load PDF, oh, okay. I told myself I wasn't going to forget to do this, but I forgot to do it. So we're just going to hop back to our command line version here, and let's uh, oops, let's just steal this uh, function that we made. Oops, come on, there we go. Oh, I don't know why I copied that twice. I just want to get that first piece anyway, and we'll just paste that in there, and then that should work for us. So let's try to rerun that. And we can add our PDF. This all works. Document one. Didn't import PyPDF. Man, I am just winning on this video. Okay. So this good good example of, uh, I guess, what is it, error-driven development, where you just write something and then see how many errors you can make. Okay, there we go. 
So we can see our, well, we're close here. We're not quite. We have our number of pages. Uh, we have our start and end page, so that worked. Um, but I did make a typo somewhere in setting this label here. So what did I do? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, so we started on column zero, then we went to column one, then we went back to column one. This should be a two, looks like. This is a three, four, five, okay. So that, well, let's try this again. No, oh, uh, I should probably close this out. Okay, run that script. Okay, you know that looks a little bit better there. Add a PDF, let's add document one. Boom, okay. So we see our file name, we've got our little page count here, and the user can go in and say that, oh, I want the first page, or maybe they just want the second page. And they can tab around there and stuff, so. Cool, uh, we'll stop this video here. Um, the next one, we'll finish this guy up. We'll uh, put the, allow us to save it, and add the second row there. And that should be good. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.